we, we opened uh, two and a half months ago. Uh, it seems close, uh, but we are open as a museum now, and we received in, in these two and a half months over 30,000 visitors, which is a very nice number for us in the municipality of Utrecht, which is not really uh, a crowded city if you talk about numbers of tourists. Um, it's a museum that exists for 160 years already. Um, it belongs to the city of Utrecht and we have collections like um, uh, city's history, we have paintings, we have costumes, we um, collect today's art and design and we are still able to follow all these diverse directions that uh, belong to our culture. And uh, I'm here now for 11 years as a director. Uh, I have a wonderful staff, beautiful garden, uh, wonderful trees in the garden. It's, um, it's a great job. Now, Utrecht has a, a history, not only was it where they signed uh, the papers that began the Dutch Republic, but mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. there were some famous painters, one of which uh, sort of introduced Caravaggio's style to yeah. Holland. Could you yeah. tell us a little about that? Yeah, so the, the first painter that we know by name is Mr. Jan van Skorl, though he was a little earlier. Uh, he, was in, he was already there in the 16th century, and he's the first painter we know by name. And he had already a kind of bias, a kind of longing for Rome. We are just 30 kilometers from Amsterdam, but that did not even exist in the 16th century, maybe as a little village. But the painters from Utrecht already had connections with Rome and wanted to go over the, through Germany, yeah. over the Rhine, uh, to Rome to see the Italian light and to see Italian sculpture and classicist uh, uh, movements. And Jan van Skorl started a school that um, uh, one century later, um, uh, was known as the Caravagists, uh, the Caravagist painters. Um, in London n uh, last year, a beautiful exhibition, Masters of Light, was held, where you could see what kind of Italianesque uh, influences uh, appeared in Dutch art. And one of our most famous masters in the 17th century is um, Ter Brugge. Uh, Van Honthorst is also very famous. Uh, people uh, like Joachim Utewaal belonged to this group as well. And you could say that this group was already, um, uh, well, the first group of painters in the Golden Age in Holland. Though the Golden Age started in Utrecht in 1600 until 1625, and then Amsterdam came up, and from 1625 on, it took uh, Vermeer, Rembrandt, uh, people like Jan Steen, they took it over and they are now the more famous 17th century painters. And they don't have this Italianesque influence and uh, you can see stylistically big differences between um, painters from Amsterdam and from Utrecht. As I recall, uh, Van On Onhurst was yeah. uh, quite a favorite with the stadtholder of the time. Uh, yeah. You have some of those in your collection. Yes, we have some, some very peculiar ones because he, of course, like every artist had a certain development, but one of the very famous ones is uh, uh, his Koppelaarster. I don't know the translation at this moment, but it's uh, a woman who brings two lovers together. Huh? Is that the description? And that is a beautiful painter, painting in, in which you see a kind of candlelight that lit the faces from underneath, and that's typically Caravagesque. Um, and um, we, we have also portraits that are a more um, well, more sober and more uh, overall lit. Uh, so, but that is really a painter that uh, we are fond of. And he was also working for the Stadthouder, indeed, yes. Now, you have a very diverse collection here. Uh, one of them I noticed uh, that you seem to kind of specialize in yeah. is uh, Dutch magic realism. Could you tell us a little about that collection? Yeah, sure. In the 30s of this century, um, there was a kind of movement in uh, Utrecht especially uh, that um, knew surrealism in Paris and um, uh, tended to make very realistic painting. Uh, and uh, one of the, the, the more famous painters of this group is Pijke Koch. Uh, he lived nearby, like almost all the artists that we have worked from, from all the centuries. And Pijke Koch made this very, um, um, well, you, you could also say it's a it's a, as if you see the skin of the painting, so soft and so direct and um, fine his painting is. And Pekka Koch became 90 years old and had his, his best moments between 20 and uh, I think 50. 
and uh, we owe about 20 paintings that he, that he made and that he did. And he's in Holland, he's very well known. You could maybe compare him, if you see it internationally, with someone like Otto Dix in Germany, but uh, you could not compare him with Lucian Freud, because he has a lot, well, he's, uh, Pike Cocker is more soft in his, in his subject matters, and Lucian Freud is, of course, a very um, a mean painter in a way, though magnificent and great, yeah, okay. yeah. Now, outside of that, you have uh, a number of different kinds of um, exhibits, uh, yeah. including fashion. Uh, what do you include in that? Um, we have, uh, as a fashion uh, museum, uh, costumes since the 18th century, um, which is very old because very often costumes do not exist that very long. Um, the collection is over 600 pieces with all the accessories that belong to it. So we could really dress you like someone from the 18th century, maybe nice for your uh, audience, um, but not now, please. Um, uh, but we also collect, we still collect the, the two days um, designs of, of J Dutch designers, which are even today um, making work for the catwalks in, uh, in Paris. And so Victor and Rolf, some of the pieces you could see here, and even our guards, uh, I don't know if you noticed, uh, look quite modern. Uh, they have a, a Levi's uh, blue uh, suit and they, they wear a kind of uh, name, uh, we, we would call it a sherp. Uh, they are made in the same atelier, the same studio that does the sherps for the Pope. As you mean in a religious country like ours, we have our relations and uh, so that's very easy. But um, we, we, we feel that um, as a museum, it's not really the, 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 the applied arts or not really the ancient art or not really the modern art, but it's a kind of cultural feeling in which you can see at this moment that fashion designers really get something out of the air which is very important to us. And at that moment, we go to this side and then we try to get the, and to find the best pieces and collect these pieces. But we are doing the same with a couple of painters and with a couple of designers. And uh, so that's nice about this museum and its collection. It has its advantages, advantages to, to do a lot. Part of your collection, as I recall, has something to do with Rietveld. Either you have a house or something about him. Could you tell us about your connection with Rietveld? So Rietveld was born in Utrecht um, uh, in, the, in the end of the 19th century. Uh, his teacher came from Utrecht and uh, in the beginning uh, of, his, of his period as a carpenter he was influenced by, by the big architect Berlage and by Klarhammer, his teacher. And so Rietveld well, tended to the modern uh, developments and um, uh, got acquainted in the 20s with Theo van Doesburg, um, uh, the, the big um, turmoil uh, van Doesburg, who really kno knew the complete avant-garde in Europe and uh, felt like going abstract, uh, uh, but also like m making uh, a situation to live for people. So he was not only a painter, he was also um, interested in ambiance, uh, in interior design. And he saw the work of Rietveld in the 20s and then said, okay, you belong to our group. And Rietveld became, in a very short notice of time, a very important architect who was known at the Bauhaus and who was uh, copied through all through Europe and also in Utrecht. And um, he uh, developed like an architect. So he started as a carpenter and did a very famous, you've seen it, I think, blue and red chair. Um, wonderful. And then at a certain moment he came in 1931 uh, in Stuttgart in the Weissenhof Siedlung as an, as an, as an architect. Um, he appeared to be an architect that could really go on with all the developments in modern architecture with Le Corbusier and all these people uh, that made the, the 20th century so interesting. And uh, when he died in uh, the 80s, um, his, his, uh, his wife survived, of course, uh, about 10 years. He, they decided to, uh, to give us the Rietveld Schroeder House, which is a world monument and very famous and open all day. Um, and the complete inheritance and also his archives came to the museum. And uh, so we have the biggest collection of Rietveld uh, in the world at this moment. And a big part of it is displayed in our new wing. Um, and the house is open all days for the audience. We have especially there about 10,000 people a year, of which 60% come from abroad from 50 countries uh, all over the world. 
So, um, so Rietveld is one of the most famous uh, world uh, citizens uh, from Utrecht. So could you tell me, uh, when the people want to come and visit this fascinating museum, yeah. when can they come and what are your hours and how can they get here? Um, the best thing is just to go to Schiphol, uh, the, the, the airport close to, uh, uh, close to Amsterdam, and then you can decide for Amsterdam or for Utrecht. It's uh, both very, very near. It's uh, about 20 minutes from the, from the airport, if you know the right train, of course. Uh, we are open all days, uh, except Mondays, uh, between 11 and 5. And um, you can always phone us or look at the web. Uh, we, we, we point Centraal Museum point NL, and then you can have a, a, a quick view uh, of what you could expect if you come here. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for being here.